Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, CO2 lasers, specifically the, the K40 eBay Chinese brand uh, and the lenses uh, in them. Uh, because one of the keys to really making this a productive device is ensuring that this the lens is correctly placed and um, clean and the focal length is achieved. So we're going to talk a little bit about the lens and especially for those that have been following along with the replacement of the uh, air assist in that um, kind of talk about how do you change the lens and make sure you get it the right way because there is there is an up or down up and down to these lenses so one of the first things is the the lens is is at least in my case uh, fairly flat on the 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 bottom end and then it's convex on the top end so it means it's a little bit bubbled and it's really not that much bubbled and we'll kind of go over that in a minute however kind of wanted to talk a little bit about how the lens works so basically it takes the input from the laser into the lens and then focuses it down into a point in the material uh, so basically this distance between here and here is the key distance of optimizing laser performance getting that at the right distance and we'll see how that works because we're going to set up a test jig thanks to some folks on the K40 forum pointed me to some videos on this so we're going to actually do this ourselves and I'm going to show you how to do it before we get there I want to talk a little bit about light and some of the frequencies of light so off to the side I have uh, listed in nanometers some of the general frequencies of light because one of the things I wanted to share is how far out the CO2 laser is from normal light because normal our normal spectrums of light start around the 400 nanometer for blue. Blue is the most energetic light moving to green, moving to red. Then the infrared space or near infrared actually at 900 it should actually be uh, NIR and then up into the clear infrared space at 10,000 nanometers. So this is actually a, a very very long waveform uh, in a very low energetic waveform. So I, I don't want to get into the whole dynamics of that but I do want to explain um, a little bit about this because you see a lot of times you know the diode lasers up around the 400s I've built if you look at my prior videos I built some in the uh, uh, 450 nanometer range I've got I think like a, a 420 and a 445 nanometer uh, unit very energetic devices you can see the beam and, and this really comes down to how the object absorbs the beam also is how it burns with this long of a wavelength um, you're kind of hitting it with a bit of a sledgehammer versus this very fast with a ball peen hammer so this is why the difference between the CO2 and, and the diode lasers if you will but anyways what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over to the test bench um, uh, because I'm going to show a little bit about this and we're going to actually do some tests so let's cut over to the bench and I'll see you there okay so here we are back at the test bench so what we have uh, is I've got just my little vacuum vise here I've got a metric ruler over here this is this is uh, centimeters here I've just got a small machinist scale down here this is a little bit optional uh, however I'll show you the reason for it in a minute and this over here is one of my infrared cameras uh, I've got a number of cameras that have been customized to take pictures in the near infrared and actually what this has is the um, in, in, with, with most type of cameras they u either use a CCD or CMOS sensor to collect the image and that's what you're sort of watching me on now they're very infrared sensitive so they put a, what's called a hot mirror on front of them so infrared cameras remove the hot mirror in front of it and actually have a filter in front of it that impedes visible light so basically the only thing this camera can see is invisible light and one of the things that I want to do here is it's not going to quite going to go to uh, 10,000 nanometers. Uh, this is meant to cut at 950 nanometers and above. Uh, so what I want to do is I do this test. I'm also going to record it on this camera, and then I'll cut this video in at the end, uh, and you can kind of see what this camera sees, and hopefully it'll be uh, a little bit more interesting. Now to set this jig up uh, above me in the ceiling 
is a halogen light. So all the lights overhead, I, they're, they're uh, can lights in the ceiling, and it's a 100-watt halogen light happens to be there, and I've centered this directly under this light, uh, under that halogen light. And then what I do is I have my lens here in, in the holder, and the, I, I put the holder up on uh, Thingiverse along with the SCAD file for it, and I'm going to mark the focal distance on this, this scale with it. However, before I get there, one of the things, if you look at this, and, you, and I'm sure you probably can't see it in the camera, if I look at this, it's really hard to tell which side's the convex side. So what you do, and do this at your own risk, but this, this is the way, because uh, especially with my eyesight, I had a hard time telling which is which, is which. However, th this the um, the plastic is, is short of the lens, so it's not as thick as the lens by about a quarter of a millimeter. So the lens sticks out proud on either side. So what you can do is put the put the scale on there with the straight metal edge, and you notice this side's the convex side because it rocks. The non-convex side will not rock. It is flat. It is so it just fits on there solidly. Um, so that's how you can tell which is which. Now, I think the reflective side, at least on mine, seems to be the, um, I think the convex side, but it's hard, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell because both are fairly close. So anyways, so I've used the scale. I know that the, the convex side, which goes up, so in other words, the light comes down, as I understand it, into the lens from this direction, exits on the non-convex side, and, and strikes your surface. So when you do the, the focus test, this is what we're going to do. So now that I've, I've shown this part, you've seen the, the setup, the jig, uh, I'm going to actually switch. Well, before I do that, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the scale down here and use this as a target to measure uh, the pupil of, of the lens, the output of the lens. Uh, again, too, is I believe that this is uh, uh, a poisonous or toxic material that this lens is made out of. I'm handling it by the plastic and not uh, the lens itself. Uh, I've seen a number of people use latex or silicone, glove, silicone gloves. Uh, I'm just being careful not to touch it and make sure I wash my hands afterwards and I just kind of suggest you do the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera around so it's just it's zoomed in and focused just on this area down here so you can really see it. So I'm going to cut the camera, move it, and focus it here and I'll be back in a second. Okay, welcome back. That didn't take long. So now we have the the lens and we're going to take the lens and we're going to move it up and down the scale until we hit a spot on um, a sweet spot on the scale below. So I'm starting out at seven seven centimeters and notice how big the exit pupil is. And as I move it down now technically I'm at five, this is where my focal point should be, but watch as I move to four. So basically at four I, I get the best, best results. And, and basically my halo is about 430 seconds with the center dot being oh about 164 to 130 seconds itself. And so again, if I go up to five, I lose the center dot, which is my sweet spot. And if I go down to three, I lose it. But right at four, I get the center dot, and I get the smallest halo possible. And hopefully you can see this on the camera. So again, moving it up and down, uh, you, you, you can really see the difference it makes. Now, this is one of the reasons I shared the frequencies of light now. Above, I have the halogen, the 100 watt halogen bulb shining down, and um, it's got all frequencies of light. So, uh, and this lens was not designed to focus all frequencies of light. That's why I have a bit of this halo effect, if you will. So, uh, again, it's, it's very interesting. So, you can set up a, an apparatus like this. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to flip this lens upside down and put it the wrong way. And, and show you the same. Now, it does focus a bit at four, but there's what's called some aberration in the lens. I'm not sure, you probably can't see it in the camera. Uh, however, there's actually two little dots. Uh, aberration in optical terms means 
uh, something funny is going on, I guess, in simplest terms, in the optical plane. And, and so we have a slight aberration in this, and it's not really as sharp as the other way around at four. Uh, however, it's not too bad outside of this, this aberration, and I'm not sure as I get if you can see the aberration, the spike in the aberration off to the side. Um, so, you know, it's clear that there is a bit of a difference. Now let's flip it back around and go to this. Um, and you see there's still a little bit of an aberration, but it's not as bad uh, as before. And again, hopefully you can kind of see this off to the side now that I moved it off the scale. But if I go back to the scale, Again, the idea is to measure it. So, I've also done. I've also, as I showed before, I've got the um, the camera, the infrared camera off here. I'm going to splice some of that footage to the back. So, one of the clear things I've discovered about this is my sweet spot for this lens is actually four centimeters. So, I'm a whole centimeter off of the sweet spot because I've been aligning everything at five centimeters. And again, I guess you know about halfway through your material. It's supposed to be your sweet spot. That's what I'm reading on the forms. So this is actually putting me a whole centimeter off, which is a huge, huge distance. So I'm going to go change that up on the laser cutter, and I'm going to see what, it, what it's got. So I, I'm going to see about um, uh, cutting in the infrared footage to the back of this video. So still stay tuned to see what that, that footage looks like if everything works out. And uh, again, but please like below if this helped you out. Yep, I, my finger, fat finger in the um, zoom. And subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this coming out. I'm also going to do one. I've been reading about squaring up the bed off the form. A lot of good information on the K40 form. So I'll put a link to it in the uh, uh, description below. So great form to be part of if you're interested in these things. So uh, great community. So uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.